Welcome to Fire by Night. My name is Blaine Bartell. It's great to have you with us. And we are going into part two of our Satanism Unmasked program. And we're here on the site of an actual uh, Satanic Coven site where apparently people have been meeting. I have with me a special guest. His name is Roy Dowden. He's with uh, the Sheriff's Department at Rogers County. And, sir, I'd like you just to tell us how you found this site and a little bit of what you found here. We uh, first became aware of this through a citizen informant who had walked up on a gathering of people uh, that were chanting and uh, uh, it really scared the, uh, the, the campers that was uh, camping out in this recreational area. Uh, when we got here, of course, everybody was gone, but the, uh, the remains are here, the, uh, the paintings and the uh, symbols and, uh, and all. And this was as early as how, how far? It was two weeks ago today when the witnesses uh, uh, observed this activity here. We want to take you on a little tour and let you see exactly what's going on. Just follow me right over here. We have over here the, uh, the, the site where a lot of the uh, apparent rituals and the chanting uh, took place. If you come right up here, you'll see that these people who were involved in this coven were very uh, integral painters. You can see here they, they painted the Satanic Ankh, which is a perversion of the, the cross of Jesus Christ. And uh, we'll talk more about that in our program today. Uh, also, if you just follow me right around over here, we're going to see the central of, of where these guys and people were meeting. Uh, let's just look right over here. You can see the, first of all, the outline of the goat's head. And of course, you know that uh, that is a representation of uh, satanic symbolism. And uh, you can see here, if you just look right over here, the satanic eye. And uh, you can see that these people, whoever they were, were very serious. They didn't just come here and, uh, and do chanting. I mean, they, they got into very, uh, uh, you know, integral painting. In fact, right over here, uh, we found a, uh, and the police did, a uh, dog that had been sacrificed. In fact, a number of uh, animals and dogs that had been sacrificed with their entrails removed and blood drained out. And then right over here is their central uh, site where they did a lot of their rituals and they called this their satanic window. And so, folks, this stuff is real. They, they've gone to a lot of extent to give Satan glory and to, and to lift him up. Uh, the, I just want you to see one other thing, the archway over here. We don't know what this symbolizes, but obviously an archway is something that you enter. And who knows if they were entering the, into packs or covenants with the devil, with demons. We don't know. But again, you can see how much time and effort they put into the worship of Satan. I want you to know this is not New York City. This is not Los Angeles or Chicago or some really, you know, bad big city that you hear about this is you know rural america this is a bible belt and yet there is satanic activity and not just this it's been on the news all over this area and so i want you to know that it's widespread and that's what we're going to talk about in this program and how how it has become so appealing to young people and we're going to expose the devil and let him know that jesus is lord over the youth of this country roy b little 43-year-old Caucasian male, 175 pounds, professing Christian. Got saved at youth camp at age 15, backslid a week later. Age 19, surrendered to a call to the ministry at youth camp, backslid a week later. Married to Betty B. Little. Won't tell age, weight, or race. Doesn't remember exact salvation experience. Curses if you question her about it. Hobbies are soap operas and condemning fallen TV evangelists. Wanted to marry rich, but married Roy. This average American family had casually attended First Deader Than a Doornail Church for 16 years. Satan has gained a foothold in their family through the media, and they don't even know it. They have serious family problems. That's where I come in. I hope to get a word in edgewise. I am the counselor. Hi, Doc. How you doing? Oh, yeah. Turn on the charm. You're the whole reason we're at the family counselor here. One of these days, Betty. Right in the kisser. He is very violent, Doctor. He watches the R movies, the real scary ones. Ah, so what? Adds a little bit of suspense to my life, you know? I like the ones that got the devil stuff in them, you know? They just scare her to death! <laughs> Shut up! Can't you see the Doctor has something to say to you? Go ahead. Tell him he's a waste of good couch space during prime time. I'm gonna kill her with a chainsaw. Why not? Put me out of my misery. All I ever wanted was a few measly million bucks. I told you I want to live like our dynasty. <sighs> That's cause she thinks that soap operas are for real. I watch. They occupy my mind. What are you talking to me for? You watch that disgusting mud wrestlings. Well, it occupies my mind. <laughs> <laughs> 
At least the soaps have a moral to them. Yeah, like divorce or get divorced. <laughs> it has got no brain. I'm telling you, divorce looks good to me. Yeah. That's why we're here, Doc. We love God. Shoot, that's why I got this hat with a G on it. We go to church every once in a while. It's just we can't understand why God's doing all this to our family. What does God want? For me to witness? I'm supposed to say, get saved, live like me. I had all the books of the Bible memorized by the time I was four years old. Why do our children want to kill us? We have given them every single thing they ever ask for. Yeah, the Dungeons and Dragons games, you know, the Megadeth tapes. The and stereo takes up half of the living room. Our boys wear their hair clear down to their waist. Our girls shaved their whole head. What more could they ask for? They're ungrateful. I'm gonna kill them with a chainsaw. What, cat got your tongue? We paying you to sit there? You're gonna jump in here or what? Doesn't she just wanna make you kill her sometime? <clears throat> okay, first things first. Put your index fingers under each other's noses. Come on. Thumbs under the bottom lips and squeeze. Now, so-called Christians like you two are being sucked into the devil's traps without even realizing it. And you know why? because you don't take care of feeding your minds the Word of God. Now, being a Christian is a lot more than just wearing a G on your hat, bud. The spirit man cannot control the life of an individual whose mind's in a gutter. Are you willing to go cold turkey off TV, music, and movies? I worship my TV. Exactly my point. Oh, my kids never let me take their music away from them. Listen, Jesus wants you to be the leader of your household, bud. This guy is a creep failure. He couldn't lead a rat to cheese. Dedication to God and his word is the answer. You have got to get it together. Will you hear it? Just what is Satanism and just how widespread is it? Satanism is the blatant or sometimes secretive worship of Satan or Lucifer, the spiritual embodiment of all that is evil. One of the most popular Satanists today is a guy named Anton LaVey. They call him the Black Pope. And Anton is the founder of the first Church of Satan on California Street in San Francisco. This Church of Satan now boasts tens of thousands of members across the world. Although the Church of Satan claims they do not endorse human or even animal sacrifices, this practice is still widespread among many self-styled Satanists. I'll go into a city and I'll ask somebody if it's there and they'll say no. And then I'll produce a whole stack of newspaper articles that will, will tell about the ritualistic abuse of children uh, or the teenagers who, who have committed suicide because they couldn't get out of their satanic coven. Uh, in, in my city alone, and I do not live in a large city, the animal controllers have told me that the number of ritualistic killings and mutilation and torture of animals done at satanic rituals has increased between seven and nine hundred percent just in the last two years. Now we're talking about animals that have been skinned while they're alive. We're talking about animals that have had their hearts cut out. We're talking about animals whose blood has been drained. Uh, we're talking about animals who have been tortured in the name of Satan. But we really don't know how much activity we have. I can tell you there's lots of it, more than I could possibly handle, uh, more than uh, a small uh, task force uh, could handle in Los Angeles. You know, there are many different kinds of Satanists, just like there are many different kinds of denominations in the church. Probably the most dangerous that we've seen, however, are the self-styled Satanists, made up mostly of young people. These young people do the most bizarre acts, everything from grave desecration to human sacrifices. Yet their, their mission and what they're involved in uh, completely aligns with what Satan is doing and what the Bible says about him. It says in the book of John, chapter 10, verse number 10, it's Satan, our enemy, has come to steal, kill, and destroy. That they will take aspects of witchcraft, aspects of the occult, aspects of Satanism, mix them all together, and then extract what works for them. We had a very stylistic type of 
coven. We'd taken stuff that we'd learned from Dungeons and Dragons and things we'd learned from uh, books and magazines and movies and everything and used it all together and it worked. For many self-styled Satanists like Sean, what may start as curious experimentation often ends not only in their own destruction but also other innocent victims. I've got a newspaper clipping here from a young teenager. I think he was 14 years old. Two weeks, just two weeks, involved in the occult, and he stabbed his mother to death, and they found him in the bloody backyard, covered with snow after he'd slit his own wrist. I hear John Jacobs read a uh, note, a suicide note by a young man trying to get out of the occult, put a 38 or something to his forehead and blew the back of his head off because the Satanist lied to him and told him there was no escape from the occultism. I see all these things, and I decide that I can't give up. The Lord's got a purpose for me in this life. That's to reach out to those and tell them that, the, you know, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. Jesus said in the book of Luke, chapter 10, verse number 18, that he saw Satan falling as lightning from heaven. That's why you see a lot of the lightning bolts in the rock elms. It's significant of Satan's fall from heaven. And since Satan was cast out of heaven for his pride, for his rebellion, it is not surprising to me that he and his followers intentionally try to pervert and twist and mock Jesus Christ by glorifying the complete opposite of Christianity. Satanism is an inversion of traditional religious values. Uh, the cross being one of the strongest symbols to the Christian. Well, it's a strong symbol to a Satanist too, but they invert it. And at the three points of the head of the cross, they will put the 666, the uh, revelation symbol of the demon, the beast, yeah. Satan. Um, they'll recite the Lord's Prayer, but they'll recite it backwards or they'll write it backwards. I knew that if they were that interested in destroying the Bible and in mocking Jesus Christ and in mocking his crucifixion by having ritual crucifixions of infants and young boys that they took off the streets from the Skid Row areas and the, and the meat markets in any city, pick, pick a city. I knew if they were that interested in mocking Jesus Christ and the God of the Bible, he had to be real. Why have the crude elements of Satanism become so appealing to a youth generation that is more technologically advanced and educated than any other in history? I believe there are four major reasons. And number one lies right at the doorstep of the Church of Jesus Christ. So many young people today have become disenchanted with Christianity. I want to read you a scripture. It's found in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, in verse number 12. It says, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And the love of many Many young people is wax cold because they've seen iniquity in the church. They've seen the hypocrisy in some of our leaders that have fallen. And many young people today have been rejected uh, by, by churches and by, by pastors and, and by Christians because their, their hair isn't the right length or they got the wrong kind of t-shirt on or, or they listen to the wrong kind of music. A lot of Christians, a lot of pastors say we want a revival among young people. But if we're really serious, we've got to prove to those thousands of lost teenagers that we really want it. We've got to love them. We've got to accept them. We've got to embrace them and show them that Jesus Christ is real. And I tried to get out of it, but no one had the answers for me. All the Christians didn't want anything to do with me. They didn't uh, know how to talk to me. They didn't want to talk to me. And so when I turned to them, they rejected me and so I was mad at Christianity. I hated everything. We called our coven the elimination and my object was to eliminate Christianity completely because I thought every one of them were hypocrites. Don't do what so many of these pastors have done with whom I've spoken with and people who have tried to take their kids or survivors who have gone to churches have been told by pastors who say, look, we don't want any of this trouble on our doorstep. Don't come to us with that. Last thing in the world we need is a group of Satanists focusing on us. You'd be surprised how many pastors have said that to young people and to survivors desperate to get out, des desperately looking to somebody for a means of escape. And God will hold those responsible who have taken that position. The second major reason why Satanism has such youth appeal is because it offers total gratification of the flesh. I want to read to you the first statement in the nine Satanic statements found in the Satanic Bible. It reads like this, Satan represents indulgence instead of abstinence. And that's what Satanism offers to this generation. Just do what you want. Go for it. In fact, uh, perverted sexual activities such as homosexuality, bestiality, even sex with the dead. Not to mention 
ranch and unlimited use of high-powered drugs are all a regular part of satanic worship and rituals. I don't believe that teenagers that get into to this are serious at the time, but if you lower the lights and you raise the music and you give them psychedelics, hallucinogenics, after a time you can make that teenager do almost anything you want them to do. Because the end result of almost any satanic ritual is sex, uh, perverted sexual orgies. I didn't really realize that I was beginning to suffer from blackouts and the drugs and the Satanism and stuff were taking their toll upon my mind. Young person, the Word of God says in Galatians chapter 6, verse number 8, that you are not to be deceived because God is not mocked. If you sow to the flesh, you'll reap destruction. Don't allow your flesh just to go for it because you'll ultimately be destroyed. And it's not God destroying you either. It's the devil. It's sin. So give your life to Jesus. Sell out to Jesus, not to the devil. Now, the third major reason that Satanism is so appealing to young people is the use of the media by the devil. You know, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, that Satan is the god of this world, and he uses the world's communication tools to get his message out and to recruit. And one of those tools is the area of secular rock metal and, uh, and, and heavy metal music. And I want you to take a look at some albums that I brought here. This is called Deal, and uh, you can see here it's called Holy Diver. Uh, this group is uh, on the cover over here as a picture of a demon looking character slinging a, tra uh, a chain and drowning a priest and of course that represents Satan's uh, attempt to destroy God and you can also see the satanic symbol uh, there with, with his with his hand and then also this is an album that is uh, called uh, the group is called millions of damn Christians and the title of the album is this bloods for you and you can see there the uh, mockery of, of uh, the Last Supper there with Jesus and the disciples and also MD DC stands for millions of dead cops and millions of dead children, if you look on the inside of this album. Uh, also, another album, this is called Slayer. You can see there, uh, Show No Mercy is the name of this one. And uh, this is a very popular group among the Satanist groups. Uh, you can see the inverted pentagram, which is uh, characteristic of uh, Satanic worship, and also the, the goat's head as well, a lot of Satanic symbolism there. And on one of their songs, Face the Slayer, it says this, you think you can destroy, you better think again I am eternal terror my quest will never end I'll trap you in the pentagram and seal your battered tomb your life is just another game for Satan's night of doom another album here is called Venom and uh, you can see it says welcome to hell again the the inverted satanic pentagram with the goat's head inside uh, also on the back you can see a number of songs that are definitely uh, satanic sons of Satan welcome to hell in league with Satan and then it has a little quote there by the band at the bottom it says we're possessed by all that is evil the death of uh, you God we demand we spit at the virgin you worship and sit at Lord Satan's left hand now rock music and heavy metal music has the ear of this youth generation and believe me they're listening and they're learning and my son liked the good old boys you know Motley Crue, Ozzy, all the special ones even down to Metallica the rest of them and then all of a sudden he came home from school and he started with the sissy test you know little scratches across the wrist a little drawn blood a little boredom time going carve on myself and i said what are you doing and he says oh it's just a sissy test mom you know you do it and see if you can take it well then i started hearing a little bit about the music and i thought oh come on but what i began to find out is um actually through the sound levels and actually if you sit and hear something long enough it's going to become part of you if somebody tells you you're no good you're no good you're no good after a while you're going to believe you're no good the whole purpose of the music is to so break down their defenses that the lyrics can penetrate on the subconscious level and program their minds and you've got 15,000 kids at some of these concerts chanting natas natas which is satan backwards or showing the horn sign of the devil you know which is down with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and they'll do it with their left hand as a signal, frequently meaning just, I love rock and roll, but also giving hail to Satan, whether they recognize it 
consciously or not. Satan also has his voices in the movie industry as well. A 1960s film called Rosemary's Baby was perhaps the most shockingly accurate depiction of modern day Satanism. And guess who the paid consultant for the movie was? Anton LaVey, the founder of the Satanist church. And, and today we've got many other movies that have come down the pike that are blatantly satanic. Things like The Exorcist, Poltergeist 1 and Poltergeist 2, uh, The Witches of Eastwick, The Lost Boys, just to name a few. Another media tool that has triggered incredible interest in occult and satanic activity have been games. Games like the Ouija board. By the way, the Ouija board in 1967 replaced Monopoly as the most popular and the most sold game board in America. Another game uh, more recently that has become incredibly uh, accepted by young people is a game that is very deadly. It's called Dungeons and Dragons. And Dragon Magazine has here a picture on the cover of something that I think is so fascinating. You have here a witch and obviously a satanic witch because they're showing here the Baphomet the two-pointed star within the red circle on the side is an offering of something red for all the world I would be willing to guess that's blood she has her familiar a toad there she has summoned up a demon and yet you notice she's very safely within her own protective circle here she has her grimoire her book of spells which she's been consulting all her paraphernalia her black handles on the five points of the star okay typical in satanic ritual so the kids are learning the basics and i tell you what after my own experience and stuff with the group i definitely unequivocally wholeheartedly and indubitably agree D and D is morally deficient. It's spiritually corrupt. It is educationally evil. It teaches evil, and it is potentially dangerous. And um, the road to the ideals it represents leads to destruction. And that's the only place they lead. I should know. The fourth major reason for youth appeal in Satanism is the fact that Satan tries to temporarily counterfeit the hunger that people have for power. They're looking for power today. In fact, the reason is God wants to give people power. The book of Mark chapter 16 says that those who believe in Jesus will go out and they'll lay hands on the sick and see the sick recover. Those who believe in Jesus will cast out devils. We have power in this world today if we're Christians, and so Satan tries to counterfeit that. The Bible calls him an angel of light and see that's what he tries to do he tries to look as close to the real thing as possible it would be like if someone gave you a glass of orange juice that had some poison in it it may be orange juice it may even uh, taste like orange juice it may look like orange juice but the fact is when you drink it it's gonna kill you when they see people who have a bent for the evil people who have uh, an inclination to really seek out that power, after some weeding out periods and, and processes, they will say, hey, you really want to see some power? You really want to see some channeling? You really want to see the spirits work? You want to be able to control them and order them about? Here, we'll show you. Next thing you know, a lot of these people find themselves involved in uh, early level stages of Satanism. Make no mistake about it, Satan does have power. Matthew chapter 24 says in the last days that there'll be false Christs and false prophets that will arise and they'll do lying signs and wonders that if it were possible, they would deceive the very elect. Satan does have power. But you know what the good news is? 1 John 4, 4 says, Greater is he that is within us than he that's in the world. There, there is nothing that can break the powers of Satan more than prayer can sometimes at rituals and usually at least what I have seen when babies are about to be sacrificed or when there is a sacrifice to be made sometimes a light has shown just miraculously has shown in the middle of the ritual the rituals are always performed in darkness and when the Satanists have seen the light they automatically have said then recognized it as the light of God and they close up shop Satan's power is no match for the power that we have in Jesus Christ through prayer the key is we got to use it my dad, Mr. John. On our last family first. Lance. And it's my mom, Mrs. Collins. Good evening, Lance. 
And guess what? Lance got gloriously saved tonight at the Solid Rock. You know, Lance, the Bible says that when somebody receives Jesus, all the angels in heaven are rejoicing. That's right. The devil's defeated in your life now. You really think so? Did it go without a hitch? Yeah, they swallowed the whole thing. What a bunch of idiots. Now, you know what to do tonight. It's as good as done. In Jesus' name, Lance. In Jesus' name. There you go. In the name of... There it is. Oh, that's right. That's where you're going. That's where you're going. Judas, what's your report? Well, the school teacher that tried to form a task force to expose satanic activity in the school system, he suddenly lost interest when his wife fell ill. I don't think we'll have any troubles with him anymore. Goat, what do you have for us? So far, they don't suspect a thing. Everything is going according to plan. You're weak. You don't intend to go through with this. Satan is not pleased. You know your choices. It's either him or you. Tonight, it will happen. Doug Collins, come against you in the name of our master. You will no longer wreak havoc to the kingdom of darkness. going to preach tonight, but I really feel like we need to pray. The Bible says that our battle is not with flesh and blood, but it's with principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. And I sense like there, there's been a real oppression against some of us. I think, I, I think Satan has really tried to attack some of us. And 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, Clarence. Isn't that right? We don't have carnal weapons, but we've got mighty weapons that can pull down strongholds. And we've got to pull down some strongholds tonight that Satan has tried to put up. And we're going to do that through prayer. Jesus has already given us a victory. All we need to do to enforce it is pray and use the weapons he's given us. So let's do that right now. Everybody, let's begin to pray. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
We thank you, Lord, that you've given us victory tonight. And we bind the powers of darkness. We tell you, Satan, that you're defeated by the power of the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. And in Jesus' name, we speak to you, you demons. Boy, what a powerful night tonight. I know we won a victory in the spirit. Oh, you better believe it. I'm sure going to miss this place. These people. You. Cheryl, I'm going to miss you, too. Connie, I don't understand. Why is God making me leave here? It's not fair being yanked up and moved to some unknown place on the other side of the country. I know, but think about the great promotion your dad's got. And I know you'll find a good youth group. I don't want another youth group. This is my youth group. These are my friends. Why is this happening? Cheryl, listen. Romans 8, 28 says that all things work together for those that love God and are called according to His purpose. And He's faithful. Thanks, Connie. I'm really going to miss these times with you. You've always been there when I need you. And you've always been there for me, too. Remember, we've always got AT&T. That's right. Well, I didn't see Lance here tonight, Clarence. Wonder if we'll ever see him again. You bet we will. He's still got my swimming trunks. Yeah, he left all his clothes at my house. We'll see him again. over this house. I thank you, Lord, that it says in, in Psalms 91 that I dwell in the secret place of the Most High, that I abide under your shadow, Lord God Almighty, that a thousand may fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand, but it doesn't come nigh me. Jesus' name. o'clock in the morning. I couldn't sleep. I had a real burden to pray. I think it had something to do with the birds. The birds? What do you mean? Are you sleepwalking? No. When I got home tonight from the solid rock, I found a dead pigeon at my front doorstep. It's really gross. It died of unnatural causes. I think there was a struggle. That is sick, Stanley. Who would do something like that? I don't know. It really sounds kind of different to me. Come on and take a look. What do you mean, take a look? You didn't bring the pigeon here, did you? Yeah, he's in my little red wagon out here on the ledge. Are you kidding? No, come on. Just a minute. Oh, I can't believe this. Oh, man, that is gross. Yeah, I don't know what happened to his head. <laughs> Lance, what are you doing here? Lance! Lance, what are you doing in my room? I've got you right where I want you now, Collins. You're a dead man. What do you mean, a dead man? The master wants you dead tonight. Who is your master, Lance? Satan. He is not. You got saved the other night. I faked that. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
Satan, I break your power over Lance's life. You shut up! In the name of Jesus Christ, the name that's above every name, Satan, your power is stripped shut in up. Lance's life. It's stripped! Shut up! It's stripped! Shut up! Help me! <laughs> Now, Lance, listen to this. This is Revelation 20:10, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Simple truth, man. Satan loses and God wins. Lance, look at me. The name of Jesus is much more powerful than any power that Satan has. If you will call on the name of Jesus, you will be saved because God loves you. See, Satan hates you. He came to steal, kill, and destroy you, but Jesus came to give you life. Look, I know God loves me. You guys have shown me that. You opened up your house to me when you didn't even know me, and no one has ever trusted me before. Not like that. Yesterday, Doug saved my life, but I just can't serve Jesus. They'd kill me. Who'd kill you? You guys just don't understand, do you? You just don't understand. I am a Satanist. I belong to a coven. I've been lying to you all along. I have an apartment here in town. I live over in Willowwood. Doug, Satan commissioned me through my high priest to come here and kill you. Satan hates you. Well, what a coincidence. I don't exactly like him. Lance, who is your high priest? I can't tell you that. They'd kill me. Where do you meet? We, we meet in an old burned out church. I'm not going to tell you anymore. Who is he, man? He can't kill you. Man, I shouldn't be telling you this. His name is Rocky Travers. Rocky Travers wants to kill me because I wouldn't let his little brother start on our Little League baseball team? Doug, it's more than that. You've been recruiting a lot of people to God and they don't like that. They see you as a threat, Doug. Man, I'm gonna get killed for this. Lance, Jesus Christ is your only hope. You need to get serious about your relationship with Jesus Christ. You need to repent of your sins and turn your back completely on the devil and turn your face completely toward Jesus. Lance, Jesus loves you. He loves you, man. It doesn't feel right. Something's gone wrong. Goat's blown it. We've got to take action. Gee, that was a heavy thing that happened last night. Did you ever suspect that Rocky and Lance were involved in Satanism? Not really. You know, I thought Rocky was a little strange with all those heavy metal t-shirts he wore and that pentagram sign he had on his jacket. But I never actually thought he was serious about it. I mean, that's the type of thing you would find in L.A. or New York. Not here in your hometown. Yeah. You know, I really believe God did a work in Lance's heart, though, last night. I think Clarence and I are going to stop by his apartment on the way home just spend some time with him. Well, listen, can I walk you to your door? No, I can't. Oh, come on, why not? Clarence has been quite a burden today. Oh, Cheryl, don't go. Cheryl, don't go. Clarence, get up. Get in the car. You can play with the windows, okay? Okay. Cheryl, I'm going to miss you so much. Doug, I'll be in the car. Clarence, all right. Yeah, right. Well... I guess this is it, huh? Yeah, I guess this is it. I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do either. Well, let's not say goodbye, all right? 
Let's just say goodnight and uh, pretend like we'll, we'll see each other again tomorrow. Okay. Well, goodnight, Doug. Goodnight. See you tomorrow. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Bye. Clarence, this door's wide open. Lance, what's going on here? Lance! 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 It's not here, Clarence. blood offering tonight. Your no. blood and your flesh. No, please, no, please. God help me. Your God will not help you tonight because you betrayed him. I know, boy, I tell you, I sure would keep my apartment a lot cleaner if I was living alone. The Satanists have kidnapped him, Clarence. Dad, be home. Connie, get Dad now. Well, then get Mom. And Connie, the Satanists have kidnapped Lance. No, I don't know where they took him. Wait a minute. Wait. A minute. Lance said they met in an old burned-out church. There's one on a hill on the east side. We're going to go over there right away. You call the police. Have them meet us there, okay? Pray like you've never prayed before. All right. Bye. Come on, Clarence. In the name of Jesus, I speak to you, you evil spirits. In Jesus' name, I tell you to take your hands off the lamps right now. And I shed the power of God's light over that area, wherever they are, in the name of Jesus. No, please! Please, no! Nothing you say can save you now. Prepare to meet the master. Help me! Satan, into your hands I commit this pig. No, please! Please, no! There's the church, Clarence. This must be it. Come on! Please help me! will call on the name of Jesus. You will be saved. Jesus! Help me! I don't think this is the right place. I don't see anybody. In here, man. You know, the real problem with Satanism boils down to one thing, sin. 
Not unforgivable sin, yet sin that separates us from Jesus Christ. And you know what? The Satanists admit it. They say in their satanic statement number eight, this, Satan represents all of the so-called sins as they all lead to physical, mental, and emotional gratification. They, they love to sin. They live to sin. Yet there's one problem with that, and it's found in the book of Romans, ch chapter 6 and verse number 23. It says that the wages or the penalty for sin is death, destruction, elimination. That means you're separated totally from Jesus Christ and his love. And let me tell you something, teenager. Uh, Satan will offer you the world. He'll offer you everything. He'll offer you uh, all the sex you want. He'll offer you all the power, all the drugs you want. He'll offer you a complete sensual overdose. But he never tells you there is a price to be paid. And there's thousands of teenagers that have paid that price and now are suffering because they sold out to Satan. You look at me here, you know who I am, you know why I'm here, you know why I'm wearing these handcuffs. Satanism isn't the way. It's a trap, it's addictive, it's dangerous, and the things of Satan lead to destruction. That's the only place they lead. And he went to the coven leader in the high school and said, I want to get out now. I, I've done one thing too many, I'm getting scared. It's not fun anymore. It's not like you said it would be. And the high priest in the high school said, you know too much. You try to get out. We're going to do something to your girlfriend. Well, he loved his girlfriend. And so he wrote his letter, a letter to his girlfriend. He said, by the time you get this letter, I'll be dead. I'm going to take my life because there's no other way to get out of this. And by the time she received the letter the next day, he had taken a gun and shot himself, and he was dead. And that's the end result of Satanism. The teenage boys who got in it just for the fun. It's death. I have that letter in my hands, and I want to read it to you. It says, Dear Nan, by the time you get this letter, I will already have shot myself. I just wanted you to know I really love you. I know every time you told me about God, I'd tell you to go to hell and pretend not to listen. But I really was listening. You're probably wondering why I killed myself after taking you uh, out last night. The truth is I was getting too deep into Satanism, and the power I had was controlling me instead of me controlling it. I got really scared, and I went before the committee. The committee was a satanic a governing group within that boy's high school. They told me that I couldn't get out. They said I must get deeper into Satanism or die. I really wanted to tell you everything, but they would probably have killed you too because I've already told you too much about them. I really wanted to accept your God into my life, but I'd already given myself to Satan. And besides, God doesn't want or need someone like me. What good would I have done for him? I love you and please forgive me. By now I'm probably with my God burning in hell. And I think it might be appropriate for us to finish the scripture we started in Romans 6.23. It does say the wages of sin is death, but it goes on to say that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And I want you to know something. Satan is not worthy of your life, nor is he worthy of the lordship of this generation. Let me tell you something. Satan isn't just as great as uh, people and as Satanists crack him up to be. It says in Isaiah chapter 14 and verse number 12 that when we see him, we'll look upon him narrowly. And we'll look at him and we'll say, is this the wimp? Is this the guy that, that shook the nations? Is this the guy that caused the earth to tremble? Have you ever seen the Wizard of Oz? They make this Wizard of Oz uh, up to be such a great big guy, such a big king, and have such a great kingdom. But when they finally find him, he's finally exposed. He's a little midget. He's a wimp. He's afraid. And that's just what the devil's like. He's not worthy of your life. And there's a number of reasons why. First of all, Satan is nothing more than just a fallen angel that is compromised. He compromised. He tried to outdo God and he lost. He got thrown out of heaven and has been uh, resigned uh, from his authority and from his place that he had with God. Whereas Jesus is worthy of your life. And you want to know why he's worthy of your life? The Bible says that he's glorified, that he's resurrected. Man, I mean, he, he, he's awesome, Jesus is. Uh, it says in Genesis chapter 3, verse number 15, it says, Satan 
bruised Jesus' heel, but he stepped on Satan's head. And that's the difference between the devil and Jesus. The, the heel bruise is temporary. Jesus got over the cross and he rose again. But I want you to know, when he rose again, he stepped on the devil's head. And that was a fatal wound. Satan is nothing more than a fallen angel. And also, Satan's name was changed when he fell. Did you know that? He used to be called Lucifer. You know what Lucifer means? The day star, the bright and morning star. It was a great name. But when he fell, he was called something different. He was called Satan. And Satan means uh, the hated one. It also means Lord of the Flies. What a name. He's been degraded. But Jesus, when Jesus rose from the dead, the Bible says that he was highly exalted. And the book, book of Philippians says that he was given a name. It's above every name. That at that name, every knee shall bow. Your knee is going to bow one day to Jesus if you haven't bowed already. My knee has already bowed to Jesus. I realize I'm totally dependent on him. You know what? The devil's knee one day is going to get down and bow to Jesus. Anton LaVey's knee is going to bow. All of the rock stars of this generation one day will bow to Jesus Christ. And you can make a decision. You could bow down now in loving obedience, or you can be forced to bow down later on. I hope you make the decision to serve Jesus now. Another reason that Satan isn't worthy of your life is because he's nothing more than a coward at heart. He's a coward. The Bible says that when we resist him, he flees. You know what the word flee means? It means to run in terror. He is a wimp. He's afraid. Why would you want to follow someone that's, that's afraid? A, a person that runs when he hears the very name of Jesus. And you know what? Uh, Jesus is different. Jesus has always been bold. He's always confronted the devil head on. When he met him in the wilderness, he spoke the word of the Lord. And the Bible says, Satan fled. He ran. And when we speak the word of God, like the mighty army of Jesus Christ, he has to run from us too. And let me tell you something about the devil. His end is not that great. I've read the end of the book, the end of the Bible, and guess what? Jesus and the church wins. The Bible says in the book of Revelation that when it's all said and done, he will be cast, the devil will be cast into the lake of fire with his deceived followers and will be tormented day and night forever. Someone says, how could a loving God throw someone into hell, into the lake of fire? I can't believe God would send someone to hell. Let me tell you something. God has never sent anybody to hell. If you go to hell, if you have a friend that goes to hell, it's because they made a decision, I'm gonna go to hell. You know why? Because Jesus gives you and offers you life. And you have the ability to choose or reject life. And you know what? Jesus went to hell for you. Yes, he did. He went to hell so you wouldn't have to. The Bible says in Acts 2.27 that God did not leave his soul in hell, neither did he allow his flesh to see corruption. Jesus took the punishment, the torture, the pain, the remorse of hell for you. He's given you life. I give you this last scripture as we close. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 10, verse number 10, that the thief, your enemy, has come to steal from you, to destroy you, to kill you. But Jesus has come that you might have life. Jesus wants to take away your loneliness and give you friendship. He wants to take away your guilt and, and, and give you love and give you freedom. He, he, he wants to remove all of your fear and give you confidence. Jesus wants to do a mighty work in your life. Maybe you've been hurt by Christians. Maybe you've been hurt by church people. Maybe you, you've been hurt by, by certain individuals, but I want you to know Jesus has never hurt you. Jesus has always loved you. Jesus gave himself for you, and he's asking this. He's saying, will you give your life back to him. Will you allow Jesus to become your Lord? He wants your life. He wants to bless you. He wants to help you. And I know you want Jesus in your life right now. I know there's many young people that are watching this program right now and you're saying, yes, I need Jesus in my heart. I want to make a confession of his lordship over me. I don't want the devil to rip me off anymore. Well, right now, if you really believe that, if you want that, I want you to pray with me. Will you do that? Bow your head with me right now in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every young person that's watching this program, every adult, that, Lord, they would bow their knee to you, Jesus, because you love them, and you want to be a Lord that, that watches over them, that protects them, that guards them in the name of Jesus. And I rebuke you, Satan. You cannot have these lives. I tell you to leave these ones alone in Jesus' name. Right now, as of this moment, they belong to Jesus Christ. And I thank you for doing a work that will be eternal, that their home 
will be in heaven and that Jesus will forever be their Lord. And it's in your name I pray, Jesus. Amen. He's walking the streets, lying the tongue, green, looking to be easy prey, spreading deceit, ready to eat anyone who can't see that he's there. Covers himself with a blanket of darkness, wants us to think he's an angel, stealing our children and trying to kill them with everything wicked and wrong. Lies to the sick, the lonely His only desire is to break them down Into the game and it fills them with pain Looking for the day they die Moves on ahead to the man and the woman Who've already pledged their lives are won Spreads his disease, makes them believe There's no reason to try to go on Bible says that Satan knows his time is short. He's scrambling. He's afraid. And you know why he's afraid? It's because the church of Jesus Christ is moving into the greatest harvest, the greatest revival that the world's ever seen. And you can be a part of it, so get ready. Well, until we see you next time, my name's Blaine Bartell, and remember, we win. program are courtesy of Revival of Evil, another video exposing Satanism. For more information, write or call.